guys, it is a cat nurse Carrie, and I'm back with more information for you. Uh, if you don't know, I've been a feeling only CVT in the Pacific Northwest for a really long time, um, and I try to make videos to kind of help you guys uh, either understand or help your cats out a little more. So if that's jam, go ahead and subscribe and like and all that crap that you're supposed to do on YouTube. But for today, I wanted to come back and make an update video for FIP. Um, many of you know, kind of at the start of this channel, I had a cat develop FIP. Um, she's no longer with, oh, you know what? If I were smarter, I would put her painting behind me. Um, Libby lives there normally, but I do have a painting I made specifically for her. <gasps> Hold that thought, guys. Oh my gosh, it's like I'm a freaking professional or something and I plan these things. Okay, so, Laura um, was a kitty cat I had a few years ago. She did develop FIP um, a few months after I had her. And you're more than welcome to kind of look back at some of my past videos because I do have quite a bit um, about her struggle and FIP in general. But, the very one of the very first videos uh, I made was uh, I, I think I had titled it "My Cat Has FIP Now What." It was one of the very first things I kind of just explained what was going on with me and what from my profession I know is going to happen or you know that kind of thing. But that was about three years ago. It's one of my most viewed videos. And it's a little out of date because it was from three years ago. So I do mention some things in that video that have since progressed. So I wanted to make another video, update you guys on what is really going on in the world of FIP. So I made notes, so I know. So yes, I am reading off notes. And okay, first quick recap. FIP, it's a mutation of what? now popular coronavirus woo um and i'm sure many of you have seen a lot of praise given to feline research for helping the advancement of covid19 treatments and such and it's true these treatments have been cross contaminated with humans <laughs> because a coronavirus is a coronavirus it does have species specific coronavirus and just about all coronaviruses mutate easily. The feline coronavirus mutates to FIP, feline infectious peritonitis. Um, it, by history, it's been 100% fatal. It has been relatively hard-ish to diagnose, and I say hard-ish because there's no one easy yes test for it. Um, you kind of do a lot of rule outs and put a lot of pieces of the puzzle together and a lot of vets just don't like to come up with the conclusion of FIP because that is giving a death sentence to your patient. Um, so by history, it's giving a death sentence to your patient. Um, there's typically two types, a dry and a wet. Dry normally causes lesions on internal organs, so it's kind of harder to actually um, diagnose than wet. Obviously, we can't visually see lesions on like x-rays. Um, we can see some abnormalities on ultrasound, but it's really hard to, to find that. And the wet, just kind of like it says, fluid builds up in places. Um, Alora had wet. She had fluid in her chest that I'd have drained frequently. They can have fluid build up in their abdomen. They can have kind of a combination of both wet and dry. Um, and it can, they can, there's kind of some subsets, neurological signs um, is, is a pretty bad sign and, and they can have kind of neurological symptoms as well as the issues with their eyes, um, ocular disease as well. So it's kind of a strange little beast it is, but you guys probably know about FIP, hence the reason you're clicking on the follow-up video to FIP. I had mentioned, or I had gone to a conference in Denver about three or four years ago, right when Alora was going through everything, and I heard um, a veterinarian by the name of Dr. Nielsen speak on the research and treatments they were developing at the time. 
and it was very promising research. It was very like cats were being cured from FIP, which was just having been in this profession long enough, knowing that it has been 100% fatal, like the idea that they actually found a bleeping cure just seemed like sci-fi. Um, but I'm gonna give you an update on those. So let's talk about the two medications that have been developed or have been researched for the FIP treatment. We have GS441524, okay, that's it. It was a drug made by Gilead Science. Um, I think it was just kind of developed as treatments for, for other things, but never really marketed or uh, made available. The other is GC376, and that was actually developed by Kansas State um, specifically for, I, I'm pretty sure specifically for that. Let's just say it was developed by Kansas State. <laughs> um, and for our, for our purposes right now, we're going to call it GS and GC. GS, the one by Gilead, GC, the one by Kansas State, not really a C, but same sound. You get what I'm going for there. And um, last year, in the beginning, it was shown that, you know, it, it worked. It worked pretty well. It worked pretty well on wet, not so great on the dry, and not at all on the neurological. But it was an advancement. It was something to at least give us some hope that we could treat this, right? Um, last year, there was a study done, and it showed, I believe this is with the GS, so the one from Gilead Science, um, GS treatment, all forms, 25 out of 31 cats actually survived um, with the treatment, with the, the 84 injections every three months, or no, not every three months, for three months, the GS form of treatment. Um, so that was incredibly promising, 25 out of 31. It's a huge number, way better than 100% fatal. So. So, okay, cool. Now we know we've got these drugs. What can we do about it? GS, the one developed by Gilead Science, the one that I just mentioned, had a, a study done, great results. Um, Gilead Science is actually refusing to get it licensed through the FDA. So uh, there was this great hope but now they don't want to do anything. They're just going to sit on it. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not in the vaccines here, obviously. I only know from the veterinary side what we can get, what we can't get. And right now they're refusing to go through the licensing process to have this drug available to us. Well, that blows for us now, doesn't it? Um, the other drug, the GC, uh, was developed at Kansas State, like we had mentioned and uh, they sold it to Aniviv, A-N-I-V-I-V-E lab, and they are currently working with the FDA to get all the test trials and all that good stuff done to make this drug available for us, legally make this drug marketed for us to use in our cats and FIP. Um, it is still in the beginning stages. Uh, their website says that they have uh, made the FDA aware of their intent to continue. So like the, the very first step of actually going through all the test trials and all that good stuff to make this drug marketed um, available to everybody. So, um, so again, it feels like we're still stuck in the should be stuff available, but, and if you have a cat that's dying of a disease to say in three or four years that might be available, really blows. <laughs> I know, I understand. Like I said, this was all in the beginning phases when Alora got FIP. Um, so it was really frustrating to know that there possibly is a cure, but you can't have it. <laughs> so what, what is, what's going on? That sounds like we're in the same spot as we have been for the past three years. Wrong because someone knows that there is a market out for this and it's primarily China. <laughs> Sound like Trump again. Um, there is a black market, not approved. The um, Gilead form, the GS, just making sure I say that one, yes, the GS, 
drug is uh, being made in China as a nutraceutical for cats um, and shipped to anyone who buys it. In essence, um, this is not FDA approved. It is not, and this, this is where it gets tricky because as a medical professional, as a licensed medical professional, you really can't recommend or suggest a black market drug, right? We're, as a doctor, they're not going to go out and tell you to get an off-label black market who knows who's making it drug. And this is where things get pretty gray for my profession. Um, I am going to link a ton of crap below, okay? A lot of resources, a lot of websites, a lot of about the studies that I keep mentioning, um, the everything I'm talking about, I'm gonna link down below. So please, if you have a cat that has FIP, check out the links below. Um, there is the black market form available. Um, it is manufactured in China. It is not USDA approved. They do have both the injectable and oral form. So. My candle just cracked. It's a cute little cat butt candle too, and it just cracked. Huh, yeah, you can see the blackness there. Huh, well, someone doesn't like me talking about black market drugs. I don't get it. Gosh, YouTube's probably not gonna like me talking about black market drugs, are they? Uh, you know, it's not human, and it's, it's yeah, it's something. So, the, the medication that is available, again, it's the GS. Um, not the GCU primarily, as far as I'm aware. Again, it's a lot of, they don't give you exacts of what is in the medication either. Um, how much of the drug are they actually formulating? Any of that good stuff. Um, there is, the, the treatment is 84 injections over about three months. They've now developed oral capsules as well. Um, so most of these places are offering the oral instead of the injection, though you can still find the injection. There's still debate on which is better. Um, some cats do seem to do well with the oral, but not all. Some seem to do better with the injection. So uh, obviously, if you are comfortable giving injections and can find the injections, that might be better. But if you aren't, can't, all that stuff, at least the oral is something. Um, there have been positive results with the oral medication as well. So um, I don't want to discourage you off of trying anything. Um, biggest drawback is it is really expensive. Um, again, it's for three months. It's once a day for three months. The <laughs> I saw one um, information site about it kind of say treatment can be anywhere from $1,000 to $11,000. And like a thousand dollars over three months, I think most of us would figure out how to do eleven thousand dollars. I don't think I could really do it, and that sucks. That sucks to say, but it is unfortunately a true side of veterinary medicine. So, so where does that leave us? Um, my personal point of view, claws. I do not recommend getting black market drugs from anywhere. Always consult your veterinarian before starting any medication regimen. Putting my owner hat on, um, if I had Alora right now and this all had come up and, and you know she had just developed FIP and I was told, you know, she's gonna die but then I found out about the black market stuff and yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, you don't 100% know what you're getting, so to speak. You can do your own research. You know, obviously it has been used a lot now. So you can do your own research, go look at other people's stories and make the, do what's comfortable for you. Your cat's gonna die or your cat might get better or it might be smoke and mirrors and you'll lose money and they'll die. You know what I mean? It's like you have to do what's best for you and what's best for your cat. Sometimes we don't catch FIP until it's so far gone that even waiting to get the meds 
they may not make it. So it's most definitely a checks and balance, just like life is. Um, but I do ask that you go check out the resources. If you have a cat and you're thinking about this treatment, go check out all the resources. If you're worried that the cat's not going to make it by the time you get your shipment, check out the resources. There's so much out there for cat owners right now and a community that is willing to support each other. Um, and like, hey, my cat just finished. I've got a couple extra. Y you know what I mean? So you may not be alone. You are not alone is the, is the bottom line. So go check out the links. Um, I hope this gave you some new information. <laughs> Forgot to mention also, and I realized um, that that's why I made notes and I didn't look at them. So part of the future, obviously the one drug may be out for us, the other drugs on the black market. Colorado State is currently working on a Corona vaccine for cats. So this means it would stop it before it would be able to mutate to FIP. Um, so that is on the horizon. Colorado State also has kind of identified a handful of proteins that they think are linked with FIP. And the, the good plus upside of having that is being able to make a test that looks for that protein. So instead of having this big guessing game and okay, I think we're looking at FIP here, it would be a yes, no, this cat has these proteins that are from FIP. So yes, it's FIP or no, it's not FIP. So more than just treatment on the horizon to help us out with FIP. So let's go back to my outro. <laughs> F the the struggle with FIP, you know, because we're actually starting to beat it for the love of George. I honestly never thought I'd see the day. Of course, I supported Win and Zen by Cat and all these um, associations that put money towards the research, but it seemed like such a distant, far-fetched idea that we would actually cure FIP that it is boggles my mind that we're pretty much there. We are pretty much there. And we have the joy in our hearts knowing that cats helped this whole COVID crisis because all the research that was done on FIP, they're using for humans now. So anyway, that is my update. I thank you for sticking around and listening to it all. Please subscribe and all that crap if you found it was somewhat interesting. Leave a comment if there's a topic that you would like me to talk about. Um, yeah, I'm starting to do about quarterly. It may go more. I don't know. Uh, cat chats where it's a live, interactive. Jump on and chat with me while we talk about a topic. Last week, we just did last week, a week or two. Recently, we just did indoor cat enrichment. So... Uh, a fun topic. I love making strange things for my cats to play with. So we talked about that and I'll see you guys next time.